Hey guys, so in this video, I'm going to show you guys how I create magnet holes. Uh, so this method is a method that require, doesn't require any, any knowledge of any 3D modeling or 3D sculpting. We're basically physically creating these magnet holes. And so I've done a, a whole bunch of trial and error with this method. And this is kind of the method that I find best and works, uh, works well for me. And so yeah, this is basically all the tools that you'll need. So first of all, that you'll need a soldering iron, one that is able to be adjusted temperature wise. So um, obviously you need your 3D printed helmet or mask or whatever, whatever prop that you want to add um, magnet holes to. And then you also need these soldering iron tips. And so these tips, you open up like this, as you can see, they're all cylindrical shaped tips with a flat end to them. So it's like a flat circular end to them and they come in all different sizes. So these ones come in size M2 to M8. So depending on what size magnet you want, um, you can basically choose which, which size soldering tip that you want. For me, uh, I have these uh, 10 millimeter magnets that are very, quite strong. So they're 10 mil magnets that you just get off eBay or AliExpress. So these soldering magnets, the biggest one I could get a hold of with M8. So unfortunately it's not big enough to create magnet holes uh, for these 10 mil magnets that I have. So as you can see, they're not, uh, it's not as big, not as big, but as a workaround to that, what I found is actually these belt buckles and these belt buckles. So there's whole, they come in a whole bunch. Um, you can get these off eBay or AliExpress. Um, they come in sets on sets of five or 10. And as you can see, they're exactly 10 mil and they line, line up perfectly with uh, the 10 mil magnets. So pretty much exactly the same size as you can see. So yeah, just to reiterate, they come in size, uh, they come in uh, packs of five or packs of 10. And they're basically, they're basically just belt buckles. And so what I found is with these belt buckles, um, I can actually attach them to the end of one of these um, uh, soldering tips. So it doesn't exactly screw in, but it kind of sits well, uh, sits nicely together. And I'll show you how um, we use both these tools together. Uh, with the iron, with the soldering iron in a sec. So I'll just set this aside now. So what you want to do is set your soldering iron to a low heat. So something around 200 to 220. So this is set to around 220 degrees and I've also set in my soldering tip already as applied. So this was original. And so basically you just unscrew it and you apply whatever soldering tip that you want. And so what I found is that this soldering tip and this belt buckle actually go together uh, quite nicely. Just be careful that it's hot. Um, so don't hold it together too long because the heat transfers over to the belt buckle. Um, so yeah, this is basically how I kind of um, apply the belt buckle to the soldering iron. Okay, so to start, all you need to do is grab your mask or your helmet and just figure out where you want to put your magnet onto the mask. So just say I want to put it here, put the belt buckle here. So just place it where you want it to be and just gent just carefully grab your soldering iron and you just want to push down onto where that belt buckle, belt buckle is. And you just want to push down and slowly adjust where you want that belt buckle to be. And so what I'm doing here now is just putting on some light pressure from the soldering iron to the belt buckle. And what this does is from the soldering iron, the heat from the soldering iron transfers onto that belt buckle and that belt buckle, the heat from the belt buckle, then transfers over to the plastic, uh, the plastic helmet. And so if we do this for about half a minute, so 30 seconds to a minute, you'll see that it starts to slowly 
melt into the plastic. So you'll feel that it starts so softening up um, and it'll start sinking slowly into the helmet. So as you can see closely, you can see it melting in. And all we gotta do here is lift away the soldering iron and just, just adjust slightly. And that's pretty much it. So right now you just wanna put back the soldering iron and right now the area is still quite hot and the plastic is still quite soft. So you don't wanna pull it away straight away um, because the plastic under the belt buckle is still soft. So if you rip it away straight away, it'll also rip away some plastic. So you want to wait for it to cool down a little bit. Um, you could you could blow on it a little bit, um, but yeah, just wait maybe you know two to three minutes, and you can pull that away. And so what I like to do is actually just start working on the next one. And because these come in packs of five or ten, you can just pretty much just start working on the next one. So to say I want the next magnet to be here, I carefully position it, and carefully take my soldering iron. And so again, position that belt buckle where I want it to be. And with your solder, soldering iron, you can just press gently. You can just control it and just start pushing down. You don't need to push down with a lot of force, just slight pressure and just hold that, hold that position and just be patient. And so just wait about 30 seconds to a minute and you'll actually feel and see that belt buckle slowly ease that ease its way into that um, 3D printed model. So just waiting a little bit and you'll actually visually see and you'll actually feel it um, start to sink in. And the real beauty of this method is the fact that it doesn't really matter how um, small or how large you scale up your model, uh, your magnet size will always stay the same. So if you have an STL and say you want to print it for your child that has a much small, smaller head than you, then you can go ahead and scale that STL um, to as small as you want, to a kid size. And when you've, once you've printed out, then that's when you can start adding your magnets. or you can sail up to a really large size for someone that has a really big head. And again, you can just use this method and this will ensure that the magnet size will always be the same. So that's the, the real beauty of this method. So that's the second one in. And yep, just be patient with it. Um, you don't need to take it away straight away. So just move on to the next one. So this takes a little bit of practice, to be honest. Uh, what you've got to look out for um, is because the soldering is very hot, you want to make sure that you don't touch the soldering iron um, onto any part of the model. Because even just a little touch of the, your 3D model, it'll actually uh, make, make it'll actually have quite a significant effect on it. So you just want to be careful for that. And obviously, just be careful of um, touching uh, those, those previous belt buckle pieces because they can still be quite hot. And also, obviously, be careful with the soldering iron. Um, if you want to be careful, if you want to, uh, sorry, if you want to ensure that you don't burn yourself, then you can always uh, wear some heat gloves or barbecue gloves. So just again, uh, at this point, just pressing down with your soldering iron. And at this point, you can also control where you want that, um, where you want that belt buckle with the soldering iron. Um, so before it starts heating up, you can actually control it and slide it along the, the 3D model. And so basically... Yeah, just have a bit some patience, hold that position, 30 seconds, and you'll slowly feel it going in, and you'll slowly feel um, the the helmet getting a bit hot. Um, and and yeah, just, just have some patience and hold that position. So yeah, it, to be honest, it does take a bit of practice, but you know, once you once you get it right, you'll um, it'll be uh, very you'll get the hang of it very quickly. And you just want to make sure that you you just want to make sure that your temperature is not too hot because if your temperature is too hot then it'll actually start melting the plastic around the belt buckle so at this point you just give it a bit of a blow and now at this point just going back to the first one so the first one should have cooled down by now and so all you need to do is with the pliers you just start you just you just gauge it if it's still soft then don't touch it just give it some more time 
But at the moment, this feels quite stiff at the moment. So you can just literally pop it off. And as you can see, there's a nice little hole there. And it's perfectly sized for your magnets to go straight in. So all you need now is a little bit of uh, super glue and just a few drops in there. And those magnets will stick tightly in there. And so that's the main gist of how this method works. Um, the, there is another way. Um, but if you have a, a soldering tip that actually matches your magnet size, then you can actually, you, know what, you won't need to have the um, belt buckles. So you can pretty much just attach your soldering tip to your soldering iron. And with the soldering iron, you can make the holes like that. The thing is with that, with this is that you can't pull away straight away. So what I recommend once it gets hot enough to, and it's made an indent, then what you, then what you do is just cut off the power to the soldering iron and just um, hold that position and slowly pull out. So both methods have their pros and, pros and cons, but I just feel like the, the belt buckle method is a little bit better because you can control it a little bit better and you, you can adjust it a little bit better once the belt buckle is in. Now the third method is you can actually, um, you can actually place your magnet onto where, where you want it and you can using using a soldering iron you can actually pl press down your mag your soldering iron onto the magnet and the soldering iron the heat from the soldering iron will transfer into the magnet and the heat from the magnet will transfer into the 3d model so same kind of idea but you're literally um you're literally melting the magnet into the into the 3d model now the that method works uh, however there's a big problem with it um, it's the fact that the when you press down with the soldering iron, uh, when you press down to the magnet with the soldering iron, the heat from the the soldering iron actually dissipates the magnetism of the magnet, so basically rendering it useless. So if you use that method, method, you can only use that magnet as a tool to make the hole. So basically, if you're using this method, um, the magnet that you use is basically a throwaway magnet. So, so the main gist of this method is basically using the magnet as a tool and um, pressing down with the soldering iron onto that magnet. The heat from the soldering iron transfers into the magnet, and the magnet sinks into the into the three D model. And then after that, you'll have to wait a few minutes, and then using a, a tool like a spatula or an exacto knife, you'll have to pry out that magnet. Um, so. All in, all in all, I think my preference is to use the belt buckles um, just because you got uh, more fidelity and you get more, uh, it's, it's more easily adjustable. And uh, just to reiterate, this method is, is good because you don't have to do any 3D modeling or 3D sculpting to put in the magnet holes. You can adjust this, your STL to as to as big as you want or to as small as you want um, and your magnet sizes will always stay the same so if you've learned something from this or if you've enjoyed if you've enjoyed this video then please hit that like and subscribe button to see more videos like this um, if you want to support me i'm also on patreon so head over to my patreon and um, just check out what i have to offer uh, i release monthly SALs for, for just ten dollars a month and um, other bonus extras so thank you for watching and i hope you enjoy the rest of your week